I'll have your tea before you go, Millicent. Yes, I do. Yes, I'm going to. Let me do it for you, dear. On your last day and everything, just relax and calm your nerves. You sound as though she were going to a doom. Oh, I never meant such a thing. You went under the impression where you deemed that I meant... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm quite sure that Mrs. Crump was only making a joke. I didn't say she meant that Millicent is going to a doom. I only said that was the way she sounded. I would never say such a thing as that. Please, Maud, I should like it very much if you would pour it for me. I am a little nervous and, well, I shouldn't like to spill anything on myself. Millicent, if you're really nervous, perhaps it would be better if I went along with you. But, my dear Dean Bracegirdle, think of your parishioners. How they would miss you with such extensive claims on your time. They really don't see how you could possibly manage it. It's only for a few days and I'm sure we could manage quite nicely. It only wants someone to organise the thing. It's sweet of you dear people to worry about me, but I shall be quite all right. There's nothing alarming about a simple journey. And I do speak French, you know. I think you are very brave, Millicent. How fortunate you are to have such a lovely sister. Please. Well, someone has to meet Clara. Why? If she can get to Bordeaux by herself, why can't she come the rest of the way? But she's been ill, Mrs. Crump. That's why she has to come back to England. Paraguay didn't agree with her at all. Millicent, I think you are intrepid. Completely intrepid. London to Dover, then across the Channel. To Kelly, have you got that bottle of pills I gave you for, for seasickness? Oh, yes. Right here, Maud. Oh, I... I do think I should be going. The boat train leaves London at eight, you know. And then the train to Paris. And an hour in Paris. <gasps> I could never do it. And then to arrive in Bordeaux at midnight. How fortunate it is you are not the one who is going, Maud. I do not approve of foreigners. They are not trustworthy. Oh, I'm sure some of them are all right. Now, you have your tickets all together. That shouldn't give you any trouble. Yes. And you must ask questions from no one but the police or some other proper official. And please, Millicent, don't practice your French on strangers. Well, of course I shan't. You know I never address strangers in a public place. You know France is really no country for a woman to be travelling about in alone. I really think perhaps I shouldn't let you go. Oh, it's much too late to change, Septimus. I shall be quite all right. I shall enjoy it. Well, Goodbye, Mr. Crump. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Ma. Take care. Yes, I shall. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Melissa. Oh, um, merci uh, bien, mademoiselle. Uh, Est-ce que je... Is a room satisfactory to Madame? Oh, you speak English. Oh, yes, it's quite satisfactory. Two o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry to have kept you up so late, but our train was two hours late. I comprehend perfectly, Madame. Does Madame require anything further? Well, if it isn't too late, may I have a hot bath? Oui, Madame. I will go and prepare it. Uh, where is the bath? Go out the door, turn right, down the hall to the little stairs, turn right, and the bath is on the left. Do you understand? Perfectly. Uh, there's one thing more. Uh, I'm, uh, I've had a long journey and I'm very tired. Fatigue. Uh, would you see that I'm not disturbed in the morning until I ring? Certainly, madame. I'm glad you told me, because we always bring café complet at 7.30. Oh, uh, uh, tea for me, please, when I ring. Certainly, madame. How depressing these foreign hotel rooms are. Nothing like home. Nothing at all. That bed is probably much too soft. Oh, well, really, I suppose these people are just like us. If they had been born in England and brought up there and spoke English instead of French, why, we probably wouldn't notice anything different about them. But, oh dear, I do feel out of place here. It doesn't seem possible that in just a few hours I should have travelled into such a strange world. 
Thank heaven this trip is half over. I believe I'm a little homesick. How oh, silly of me. What did I expect? Perhaps Clara and I could see a little bit of Paris on our way back instead of spending the four hours sitting in the station. Myself be depressed. It's merely nerves. After all, this is rather an adventure for someone who has lived 45 years without ever having gone out of England. Well, why anyone would want to go out of England, I can't imagine. How unsettling it must be. Suppose I had married Stephen and gone to live in Africa. That would have been frightfully unsettling. I would have been happy to be engaged forever. Of course, it was only an understanding, but after three years, he could have told me he was going away. Mm -hmm. I suppose he couldn't bear to. Oh, well, that's all in the past. Mm -hmm. There's always work and living for others and doing one's duty. Oh, I'll have so much to tell Septimus about the amusing American child on the train and nearly losing my spectacles and meeting the two English ladies in the station. And the French people have really been very nice. farther back. Oh, how very foolish. Well, I shall have to ring for the chambermaid, and I'm sure the poor girl is going to sleep. I mustn't scream. No. No. I must get out. Get out. I can't get out. Well, I'll ring for the... I'm in the wrong room. I'm locked in. Alone in a strange hotel with a man, a foreigner, a Frenchman. If he wakes up, what shall I do? How could I possibly explain? He wouldn't understand a word I said. No one would believe me. They're all foreigners. Oh, merciful heavens, what shall I do? Oh, I can't. It's too far down. I must get out. Should I wake him? Oh, no. Maybe I should call out. Oh, no, the people rushing in and finding me in a strange man's room after midnight. Millicent Bracegirdle, the sister of the dean of Easingstoke. Easingstoke, they'd be certain to hear about it. Now, I must keep calm. Perhaps he's quite a harmless commercial traveler. The maid will wake him up with the coffee at 7.30 and he'll probably get up and go right out. If I were in that wardrobe chest, I should be quite safe till morning. And I could slip into my room and no one would ever know. 